Self-care What is self-care? Would it lead me to be selfish and self-centered? Will I have time for that? Is that even necessary? There are days when God speaks in ways we really can't explain but our senses can truly grasp. We meet Him in Scripture, hear Him speak through people, see His work in nature, taste His bounty in our experiences, breathe in the life that He gives, and even feel His presence in our bodies. We know that it's Him, and He's in us because we were made in the image of God. Hi, I'm Deborah Lemuel, and welcome. In the Image of God is a tiny corner on the internet for sharing dance, therapeutic movement, and art-based practices to help any and everybody reconnect with ourselves, with God, and with nature. And for today's episode, we will be talking about self-care. Now let's begin with our current space, our bodies, our minds, our rooms, and the people around us, if any. To help us, get a piece of paper or a blank page of a notebook and some pens, pencils, or markers. Answer each question with only two to three words or symbols that best show your response. You may pause this video for every question to give yourself some time to respond. First question, what images come up when I hear the term self-care? Second, what do I feel when self-care comes to mind? This can be emotions or bodily sensations. Try to really be aware of what you're feeling at the moment. What have I been told about self-care? And finally, what's my own definition of self-care? Once you're done, I invite you to look closer at what you wrote or drew. You can read your answers out loud so you can hear the words. Just give your answers a second time to be received by you. Feel free to pause this video again and resume when you're done. Gently breathe as you finish. Now, what does the Bible say about self-care? There are no parts of the scripture that specifically mention self-care, but if we could look at the context of the New Testament, Paul, in his many letters, remind people to keep their thoughts, words, and deeds pure and clean before the Lord. According to Paul's letter to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, verse 14 to 16, he says, Do not neglect your gift, which was given to you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them. Because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Another is according to Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8. In conclusion, brothers, focus your thoughts on what is true, noble, righteous, pure, lovable, or admirable, on some virtue or on something praiseworthy. It seems that Paul was talking about keeping ourselves pure, calm, and constantly checked not just for the sake of the self, but also for the sake of the other. To translate in our context, the World Health Organization defines self-care as the ability of individuals, families, and communities to promote health, prevent disease, maintain health, and to cope with the illness and disability with or without the support of a healthcare provider. Historically, the term self-care was coined in the 1950s to describe activities that allow patients to preserve some physical independence. In the 1960s, 
Academics saw the connection of self-care to occurrences of post-traumatic stress disorder and was highly recommended for careers that were constantly exposed to pain and stress. In the 1970s, self-care was an important matter to the Black Panther Party as a means of staying resilient in the times of repeated oppression and discrimination. Over time, people have used self-care as a way to channel our innate sense of self-preservation or our natural instinct to keep ourselves alive. I hope the references that I shared with you helped in better understanding the importance and benefits of self-care. In addition, modern therapy says that there are eight types of self-care. There's physical, psychological, emotional, social, environmental, financial, and spiritual. In the next few episodes, we will be diving deep into each one of them. Now return to your answers from earlier. After hearing about what self-care is, did anything change for you? Write them down. What did God tell you today? And is there something in nature that reminded you of self-care? After learning and reflecting upon today's word, create for yourself one to two non-negotiable daily acts of self-care and self-love. It can be physical, like drinking more water or taking a nap. It can be psychological, like reading enriching books or listening to good music. It can be social, like calling a friend and catching up. It can be spiritual, like watching the chosen series or giving more time for prayer. It can also be financial, like setting aside for savings. It can be professional, like journaling some good practices that you do at work or taking initiative in studying advance for school. It can be environmental, like taking care of a new plant or cleaning up your space. There are so many ways, but I highly recommend that you start with one or two commitments only to encourage you to start easily and joyfully. Once you get the hang of those first two things, around 10 to 21 days, you can slowly add more to the mix. Don't forget, self-care is your first act of stewardship and better service to others. If we don't know how to care for ourselves, we will not know how to truly care for anyone else around us, including nature. Thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to Sustainable PH TV for more enriching content on sustainability and how to practice creation care. Until the next one, may God be with you today.